Robert Merton Solow, GCIH, born August 23, 1924, is an American economist, particularly known for his work on the theory of economic growth that culminated in the exogenous growth model named after him. He is currently Emeritus Institute Professor of Economics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he has been a professor since 1949. He was awarded the John Bates Clark Medal in 1961, the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 1987, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2014. Four of his Ph.D. students, George Ackerliff, Joseph Stiglitz, Peter Diamond and William Nordhaus later received Nobel Memorial Prizes in Economic Sciences in their own right. Biography <inaudible> 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 Robert Solo was born in Brooklyn, New York, into a Jewish family on August 23, 1924, the oldest of three children. He was well educated in the neighborhood public schools and excelled academically early in life. In September 1940, Solo went to Harvard College with a scholarship at the age of 16. At Harvard, his first studies were in sociology and anthropology as well as elementary economics. By the end of 1942, Solo left the university and joined the U.S. Army. He served briefly in North Africa and Sicily, and later served in Italy during World War II until he was discharged in August 1945. He returned to Harvard in 1945, and studied under Wassily Leontief. As his research assistant he produced the first set of capital coefficients for the input-output model. Then he became interested in statistics and probability models. From 1949–50, he spent a fellowship year at Columbia University to study statistics more intensively. During that year he was also working on his Ph.D. thesis, an exploratory attempt to model changes in the size distribution of wage income using interacting Markov processes for employment-unemployment and wage rates. In 1949, just before going off to Columbia he was offered and accepted an assistant professorship in the economics department at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. At MIT he taught courses in statistics and econometrics. Solo's interest gradually changed to macroeconomics. For almost 40 years, Solo and Paul Samuelson worked together on many landmark theories, von Neumann growth theory 1953, theory of capital 1956, linear programming 1958, and the Phillips curve 1960. Solo also held several government positions, including Senior Economist for the Council of Economic Advisers and Member of the President's Commission on Income Maintenance His studies focused mainly in the fields of employment and growth policies, and the theory of capital. In 1961 he won the American Economic Association's John Bates Clark Award, given to the best economist under age 40. In 1979 he served as president of that association. In 1987, he won the Nobel Prize for his analysis of economic growth and in 1999, he received the National Medal of Science. In 2011, he received an honorary degree in Doctor of Science from Tufts University. Solo is the founder of the Corneau Foundation and the Corneau Center. After the death of his colleague Franco Modigliani, Solo accepted an appointment as new chairman of the ISEO Institute, an Italian non-profit cultural association which organizes international conferences and summer schools. He is a trustee of the Economists for Peace and Security. Solo's past students include 2010 Nobel Prize winner Peter Diamond, as well as Michael Rothschild, Halbert White, Charlie Bean, Michael Woodford, and Harvey Wagner. He is ranked 23rd among economists on REPIC in terms of the strength of economists who have studied under him. Topic: Economic contributions. Solo's model of economic growth, often known as the Solo-Swan neoclassical growth model, as the model was independently discovered by Trevor W. Swan and published in The Economic Record in 1956, allows the determinants of economic growth to be separated into increases in inputs labor and, capital and technical progress. The reason these models are called exogenous growth models is the saving rate is taken to be exogenously given. Subsequent work derives savings behavior from an inter-temporal utility maximizing framework. Using his model, Solo 1957 calculated that about four-fifths of the growth in U.S. output per worker was attributable to technical progress. 
Solo also was the first to develop a growth model with different vintages of capital. The idea behind Solo's vintage capital growth model is that new capital is more valuable than old vintage capital because new capital is produced through known technology. Within the confines of Solo's model, this known technology is assumed to be constantly improving. Consequently, the products of this technology the new capital are expected to be more productive as well as more valuable. The idea lay dormant for some time perhaps because Dale W. Georgensen argued that it was observationally equivalent with disembodied technological progress, as advanced earlier in Solo 1957. It was successfully pushed forward in subsequent research by Jeremy Greenwood, Zvi Herkowitz and Per Krussel 1997, who argued that the secular decline in capital goods prices could be used to measure embodied technological progress. They labeled the notion investment-specific technological progress. Solo 2001 approved. Both Paul Romer and Robert Lucas Jr. subsequently developed alternatives to Solo's neoclassical growth model. Since Solo's initial work in the 1950s, many more sophisticated models of economic growth have been proposed, leading to varying conclusions about the causes of economic growth. For example, rather than assume people save at a given constant rate that Solo did, subsequent work applied a consumer optimization framework to derive savings behavior endogenously, allowing saving rates to vary at different points in time, depending on income flows, for example. In the 1980s efforts have focused on the role of technological progress in the economy, leading to the development of endogenous growth theory or new growth theory. Today, economists use Solo's sources of growth accounting to estimate the separate effects on economic growth of technological change, capital, and labor. Solo currently is an emeritus institute professor in the MIT Economics Department, and previously taught at Columbia University. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> MIT Economics, 1960 to 1979. In the early 1960s the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT was the native land of the growth man. Its leading light, Paul Samuelson, had published a path-breaking undergraduate textbook, Economics, an Introductory Analysis. In the sixth edition of Economics, Samuelson 1964 added a new chapter on the theory of growth. Samuelson drew on the work on growth theory of his younger colleague Robert Solow 1956, an indication that growthmanship was taking an analytical turn. The MIT economists were thus growthmen in two senses, in seeing growth as an absolutely central policy imperative and in seeing the theory of growth as a focus for economic research. What the MIT growthmen added was a distinctive style of analysis that made it easier to address the dominant policy concerns in tractable formal models. Solo's 1956 model was the perfect exemplar of the MIT style. It provided the central framework for the subsequent developments in growth theory and secured MIT as the center of the universe in the golden age of growth theory in the 1960s Boyanovsky and Hoover 199-200. Topic Honors Grand Cross of the Order of Prince Henry, Portugal the 27th of September 2006 Topic Publications Topic Books Dorfman, Robert, Samuelson, Paul, Solo, Robert M. 1958. Linear Programming and Economic Analysis. New York, McGraw-Hill. Solo, Robert M. Growth Theory, an Exposition, 1970, Second Edition 2006. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0195012958. Solo, Robert M. 1990. The Labor Market as a Social Institution. Blackwell. ISBN 978-1557860866. Topic Book Chapters Solo, Robert M. 1960, Investment and Technical Progress, in Arrow, Kenneth J., Carlin, Samuel, Supace, Patrick, Mathematical Models in the Social Sciences, 1959, Proceedings of the First Stanford Symposium, Stanford Mathematical Studies in the Social Sciences, IV, Stanford, California, Stanford University Press, pp. 89-104, ISBN 9780804700200. Topic. 
Solo, Robert M. 2001, After Technical Progress and the Aggregate Production Function, in Holton, Charles R., Dean, Edwin R., Harper, Michael J., New Developments in Productivity Analysis, Chicago, Illinois, University of Chicago Press, pp. 173-78, ISBN 9780226360000 645. Solo, Robert M. 2009, Imposed Environmental Standards and International Trade, in Canber, Ravi, Basu, Kashik, Arguments for a Better World, Essays in Honor of Amartya Sen, Volume 2, Society, Institutions and Development, Oxford, New York, Oxford University Press, pp. 411-24, ISBN 9780199239673. Topic journal articles Robert Merton Solo January 1952. On the Structure of Linear Models. Econometrica. 20 29 and M-46. doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 1907805. Solo, Robert M. The Production Function and the Theory of Capital. The Review of Economic Studies, 103-107. Solo, Robert M. February 1956. A Contribution to the Theory of Economic Growth. Quarterly Journal of Economics. Oxford Journals. 70 65-94. 10 doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 1,884,513. PDF. Solo, Robert M. 1957. Technical Change and the Aggregate Production Function. Review of Economics and Statistics. The MIT Press. 39 3, 312-20. doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 1926047. PDF. Solo, Robert M. May 1974. The Economics of Resources or the Resources of Economics. The American Economic Review, Special Issue, Papers and Proceedings of the 86th Annual Meeting of the American Economic Association. American Economic Association. 64, 2, 1-14. JSTOR 1816009. Solo, Robert M. September 1997. Georgescu Rogan vs. Solo, Stiglitz. Ecological Economics. Science Direct. 22 267-68. doi, 10.1016, S0921800097-00081-5, see also, Nicholas Georgescu Rogan and Joseph Stiglitz. Solo, Robert M. November 2003. Lessons Learned from U.S. Welfare Reform. Prismi. Corneau Center for Economic Studies, 2. Archived from the original on the 16th of May 2015. Solo, Robert M. Spring 2007. The last 50 years in growth theory and the next 10. Oxford Review of Economic Policy. Oxford Journals, 23, 1, 3 to 14. DOI 10.1093/oxrep grm004. Topic. See also. Topic. References Greenwood, Jeremy, Krussel, Per, Herkowitz, Zvi Long-Run Implications of Investment-Specific Technological Progress. American Economic Review, 87-343-362. Greenwood, Jeremy, Krussel, Per Growth Accounting with Investment-Specific Technological Progress, A Discussion of Two Approaches. Journal of Monetary Economics. 54-1300-1310. doi, 10.1016, j.jmaneko.2006.02.008. Georgensen, Dale W. The Embodiment Hypothesis. Journal of Political Economy. 74 to 1 minus 17. Doi 10.1086 259105. Topic. External links. 
Nobel Autobiography Video interview with Solo from NobelPrize.org Articles written by Solo for the New York Review of Books Robert M. Solo, Prize Lecture Toy, John. Solo in the Tropics. History of Political Economy. 41 221-40. doi, 10.1215, Ideas, Repic Robert M. Solo Papers, 1951-2011 and undated. Rubenstein Library, Duke University. Robert Merton Solo 1924. The Concise Encyclopedia of Economics. Library of Economics and Liberty 2nd ed. Liberty Fund, 2008. Appearances on C-SPAN. Robert M. Solo at MIT Infinite History. Biography of Robert M. Solo from the Institute for Operations Research and the Management Sciences.